right, everyone, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. We're just getting to just over 20 minutes to the top of the hour and uh, we're getting ready to wrap up for the day. But before then, we want to talk about decoding text messages uh, from both men and women. What do they really mean with some of those phrases that they send you on SMS? Uh, joining me in studio, I have Justin Kipp, who's a counsellor. Karibu Sana to the show and uh, he's going to be tackling this with me and of course you can send in your feedback too what are some of the lines you guys have heard uh, common phrases that you keep hearing from your loved ones or your significant other in your life and you've just been wondering okay, sasa, wait, wait, what does this actually mean double two triple nine is the SMS sign you can also comment on our Facebook page at switch TV Kenya on Facebook all right so let's get started Justin okay um Let's look at some of the most common sort of responses, replies that we see on SMS and try and decipher what they actually mean. Um, but before then, uh, why is it that this is even a problem? That already we have people sort of sending these coded messages instead of just coming out and being open? Um, I, I think the first thing someone has to consider is the fact that uh, when it comes to communication that... Um, Texting is not the most efficient of communication because if you are to think of it, um, there are people, it depends with the kind of school you are from. I'm, I'm talking about the school of thought. Mm -hmm. But there are people who believe that uh, communication is around 90% nonverbal communication and 10% whatever now amounts to the text, whatever amounts mm -hmm. to the words that you're using. Some believe uh, it to be around, uh, is it 58% nonverbal communication? That's basically body language. And... Uh, around 37, 35% of it is actually your vocal intonation. Mm. And then the wording and all that, the diction comes in at around 7%. Okay. So if you, are to, if you are to play around with the percentages, you realize that one thing is that um, when you are texting, rather you lose a lot in terms of what you're meant to express as a person mm -hmm. because there's a huge percentage of your expression which is innate in every human being that is actually um, left out. Because we, we, we need that body language, we, we need the vocal intonation to give a context to the kind of words that we're sharing. Mm -hmm. I know that's what is limited when it comes to texting. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's look at some common messages, you guys. And of course, you're invited to share some of your own. Mm -hmm. But one of them is very common here. I'll let you know. Hey, Kenyans love saying, I'll let you know. Talk show. Talk show. Yeah. <laughs> what exactly does that mean? Is it disinterest? Um, because then you unangoja unangoja to be shown, and it just doesn't seem to come forth. So, mm. what is that about? Well, I'll let you know to a good extent. Uh, may actually carry two different meanings. This uh, because it actually depends on the kind of person. If you actually know them, if they are strangers, to a good extent, it may actually just mean something as simple as. I'm not ready to make that decision yet. Mm -hmm. I need some time to make that, that decision. And so that may be one, or, or, that, may, that may be the case. Or in other instances, it may actually be a, a simple way of someone telling you, um, I'm not so rude, no. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. So it's a not so rude, no, in yeah. a lot of different cases. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's say you've sent someone messages and you've either received short, slow, or no replies. What waku blue tick, team blue tick. And finally, you just feel, you know what, I can't take this anymore. And you ask them, hey, what's going on? And they just text you, mm. I've been busy. Oh, that's, that's a sad one. I think <laughs> that's another way of being told that uh, you're not out of the friend zone yet. And I think it's another way of telling you go back to the friend zone silently because at the end of the day the whole idea of being busy sometimes well there are people who will say that yeah probably i'm busy my well basically the world doesn't revolve around you and all that but also to a, a good extent it may actually mean um busy may actually mean just you're not in the pri in my priority priority list you're not on top of yeah. the priority list yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, so hey, come here, for one month. I love me to go and be. I was busy. Chipange tu kando. All right. Um, this is another one. Good morning and good night texts. Do they actually mean the person is genuinely thinking about you? Na patanga tu ka text tapos two a.m. Good night. 
Well, that one, I think everyone who has actually texted or if you've ever loved someone or, you know, cared about someone, you will have that feeling of actually texting someone, good night, you know, good morning. Sometimes it's, a, it's just another way of someone trying to, um, for lack of a better word, trying to keep tabs. Yeah. You know, it's in a way marking a bit of territory, telling you that, you know, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be forgotten. Mm -hmm. So to an extent, that may actually mean that the person is, to an extent, mm -hmm. interested in you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm. Let's talk about one word replies. There are times that Yani Umeandika, you've poured out your whole heart, told them about your day, what you had for lunch, how gee, the matatu splashed water on you, and then they're just like, cool. <laughs> K. K. Yeah, they don't even complete the word, yeah. it's just letter K. <laughs> or well, an emoji. A T. Thumbs up, and say. That's. Uh, that, 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 that's savage, for lack of a better <laughs> word. It's savage for you to give a whole story and then someone gives you a K. I think a K is, you know, sometimes it's the closest thing to no response. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in a way, you're just being told, hey, if it's dude, someone is, being, is telling you that, hey, dude, uh, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, as we get through some more of these texts, I want to ask you a question here from one of our audience members. Oh, okay. um, and it could still be, it's not necessarily deciphering text, but it could hmm. be deciphering behavior. Oh, okay. okay. So here someone says, I have a boyfriend whom we've been dating for eight years, but he has never given me any gifts or surprises. And when it comes to money matters, he says nothing about it. And when I ask for cash, assistance he hesitates before giving this giving it is this a red flag to worry about that's mercy watching us from naivasha so you know what's your take on this question and maybe you can even begin with with even the the asking for money when you're dating oh, okay you know does that because I, I feel like a lot of these coded messages and the responses can mm. actually stream from that yeah. you know constantly being asked for money by your boyfriend your girlfriend um and then not giving any surprises. Are those any sort of coded messages in there? Well, it may be coded, but also at the end of the day, you have to understand that um, people have a certain background where they come from. I'm not talking about just the cultural one, but also in terms of what they've been able to experience in terms of uh, um, the, their experiences with other people in the past, or uh, both their mental, and uh, also emotional state also play a role in that. Mm -hmm. Think about someone who has, to a good extent, um, hangs around with people who have had um, a, a form of abuse mm -hmm. in their relationships, where they've always been asked for things and ended up realizing that they are basically, uh, for lack of a, an awesome word today, I'll say, an ATM. Yeah. Or maybe they found themselves feeling that feel of being used because at the end of the day you need to realize one thing that for most ladies at, at the end of the day it will be similar a similar case would be a man who's always asking for sex mm. and a woman who's always asking for money mm. it's usually you no know, if uh, we may just go our kenyan way what people usually say same what's up mm -hmm. yeah because at the end of the day it, it seems more like if you have to ask for those things, there has to be a relationship that has been built in that, not just a relationship, mm -hmm. but there has to be a way whereby you communicate why you want to, why you are asking what you're asking. And in a way, it, it should also show that that particular thing that you're asking for, whether it's a gift or is it uh, in terms of money, or that is not more important mm -hmm. than the person yeah. that you're asking. Because yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, if it ends up looking more like you're in your need for what you're asking for, for what you're looking for for the mm -hmm. gift you, that will actually send a wrong message and sure. then at the end of the day there's also something also simple to realize is that sometimes the whole thing about asking for things and all that is not really the thing that's wrong it's just that the problem comes where there are many people who don't know each other's love languages mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so whenever they are, what they're doing is they're trying to they have partners whom they do not understand yeah they may be showing love to that, uh, let me use the example of the lady who was just texted. Uh, they may be showing love in a different way yeah, than what yeah. she's able to appreciate. Yeah. Now but the for point her, is for her, her language is these yes, flowers and yes, gifts. Yes, she, she, she's someone who, yeah, that, 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 that sometimes is the case, especially okay. when love languages usually clash. Okay. Sometimes it just means we have to come and sit down okay. and talk about it.
All right. Yeah. Um, what about breaking up over text? Sabina here says, my ex-boyfriend mm. broke up with me through text messages. And when I asked him to meet me and say it in person, he decided to cut off communication completely. Um, and she's wondering about whether that decision really came from his heart. I actually feel that's actually a coward move. Because at the end of the day, I believe most people who resort to actually breaking up on text messages are people who do not want to be vulnerable because at the end of the day, they, are, they also fear being able to you know, open up because breakups, breakups are very painful moments mm -hmm. and the people do not want uh, their vulnerable selves to be seen. Mm -hmm. Also, at the end of the day, they may be protecting themselves from seeing someone's distress. Yeah. That may be also another thing. Yeah. And so I don't believe in any way that a text message is the right way for anyone to actually break up. Mm -hmm. For the first time that you guys started dating, there's a high probability that you guys talked. Yeah. You guys met and talked together as two adults. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's not the right way of actually doing things. I believe if you started your relationship, you were talking. It's good that if you're ending it, come and talk together. Okay. If you feel like you need to, uh, to, to have a neutral party with you, that will also make a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. So for her, she should probably move on from yeah, it then because he, he did her a disservice, yeah. really. Yeah. Okay. Um, someone else here uh, trying to decode some of these text messages. Yeah. Someone says, when someone tries to say something, um, or you're trying to say something to someone, and their response is, achatu. Achatu. <laughs> achatu, you know, with the Kenyan thing, the way we are, our language, I'll use an example. The word poor. Mm -hmm. How many meanings can you derive from the word poor? Mm -hmm. Poor. Uko poor. Mm. May mean, for instance, uh, you look nice. Mm -hmm. Uko mm -hmm. If I may say, uko poor, maybe we are in a place near a shop and I'm trying to ask, do you have the money? Yeah, for that? yeah. <laughs> so you, you see, Acha too may also have those kind of different meanings. Sometimes the Acha too may actually be someone who is more like not really ready to discuss whatever you guys were talking mm. about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, someone says, I personally think that real men talk to you mm. rather than communicating via text. People like to hide behind text messages. Mm. Absolutely. Um, Someone here says, I use coded messages when nime kasirika. Kama hiyo, good night, and I don't write the whole name. And also, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> when I don't want to listen to you, weh, Irene Kendi wa Mombasa, sawa. But I appreciate your honesty, yeah. sis. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, when someone is upset, yeah. right? And people are different. We may not always want to confront a situation immediately. Mm. Yes. But this person is expecting this conversation. Maybe they're, you're apart. Boy, yeah, you're dating or something, so you're not together at the moment. Mm. Um, you know, how do you sort of maneuver that when you're upset? You're talking, you know, through distance, uh, but one person is not ready to confront an issue right now. Um. When it comes to conflict resolution through text, I think to a good extent that is one of the worst ways of actually trying to solve issues because to an extent it may actually aggravate issues because there's a high chance that you're going to have a lot of miscommunication through text. Mm. Because, you know, text sometimes, do not, uh, 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 through a text you're not able to convey what is in your heart. And sometimes, depending on the heart condition, rather where the other person is emotionally, what happens is they may, may, might end up interpreting your text through the lens of the pain they are mm. through at that particular time mm -hmm. and may make that simple text that you wanted to send to actually be something so tough on them. Yeah. And it may actually make things to be so hard that even when you guys will have to come back maybe and meet and talk, it it's may just, just be a point of stress for you. Yeah. To, Okay. All right. Well, our time is up. I need to get ready to wrap up the show. But let me just see uh, if there's any final thing I can read here on Facebook. Millie Rispa Koi Washira, you say you're loving the conversation. Selassie Mpendarege, you're tuned in from Embu County. And let me just end with this comment here uh, by Florence watching us from Imara. She says, hey Joyce, uh, I realize sometimes it's really not about priorities. My current hubby, when we, were, when we started dating, I almost gave up on him following his poor chatting habits, like replying very late to texts and you thought that he never mattered or you never mattered to him. But then one day you chose to just speak up and you said everything you could and he noticed that you were frustrated. 
And uh, from then on, he's been upping his game. Chatting has never really been this thing, his thing, but these days he's sort of addicted to it. You're married, but you still chat when you're apart. And sometimes it takes one person to train the other, she says. Communicate your thoughts before giving up. Very quickly, your reflections and uh, final statements uh, mm. as we wrap up. Um, well, all the things we have talked about in terms of actually decoding text messages, uh, let me say they are they are not static, they're dynamic, in such a way that it depends from person to person on the kind of relationship you have with a person, in such a way that at the end of the day, we also have to consider there are people who are not good at texting. Yeah. There are people who basically don't do well when it comes to texting. Okay. And so I believe to a good extent, there's always uh, one of the things that you need to exercise is to extend a hand of grace, whatever we actually call the benefit of doubt, anytime you are interacting with an SMS okay. or a text from someone that you love. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Justin, thank you so much for joining us here on the show today. Asante Sana. And thank you to you guys for all your questions and your comments. Uh, hopefully you've learned something here today. You know, one word answers, emoji replies. Let's stop it. Let's stop it. Let's stop it. All right, guys. Uh, coming up next here, we have Evelyn Wanjiru with the song Jehovah Elohim. And I'll be back to wrap up the show. Stay tuned.